Drink driving is a global problem and Nui Police continues on its campaign to decrease unnecessary accidents by raising awareness and changing public perception. Nui Police have joined forces with three specialists from the Hawke's Bay to roll out the Just Another Saturday Night campaign that targets young people and their decision making. Linda Anderson, the regional manager of Road Safe Hawke's Bay, says that the campaign they are running can be transferred across the board, although they are dealing with different communities, the effects of alcohol and speed, the outcomes are the same. Youth, alcohol, speed, all those associated, it's a global issue. Um, the World Health Organisation is rec you know, recognised as one of the um, biggest killers of our young people. So although it's a local crash, the same associated factors are there. You know, drivers have been drinking, speed, no seat belts, all those things. So you can transfer that here to the to Nui, um, just by that. Although it's you know a local road, but a road's a road, um, and it's saying it has the same outcome. You know, people died, people were critically injured. Um, so we wanted to be able to share that. Uh, with the local providers here. We've met with public health. It's a resource that they can use. Um, so, you know, we're very pleased to um, share it and we feel very privileged that we were actually asked to bring our resource. There was a lot of work that went into it. Um, so it's very exciting for us. We decided that we wanted a local story with a very strong message about decision-making and consequence because this is what we're seeing kids um, doing. They go out and they party and they don't have a plan how to get home, they drink and drive. So we're saying to the kids that you need to be prepared. We know that young people go out and want to socialise. The thing is you need to be prepared. How are you going to get home? And we tend to focus on the driver, about, about being sober. The thing too is, is, is for the, your passengers. Are you getting into a vehicle with a driver that's impaired? Have they been drinking? You know, and we're not talking about drunk drivers. We're talking about drivers who have been drinking because you are impaired as a driver when you've even had a small amount of alcohol. So it's just being safe and making good decisions. Ian Cheney, a crash analyst with Hawke's Bay Serious Crash Unit, says that alcohol, speed, inexperience, driving does not mix. And this is something they are trying to get across through the personal story of a survivor. The main person was involved in the crash, he survived it, he's now tetraplegic which means he's spending his life in a wheelchair. Uh, it's just not the police waving their finger telling you not to do something, it's purely a survivor telling a story about how terrible the crash was, what it's meant to him. He lost a brother, he lost a friend, two people died in the crash and he ended up in a wheelchair. Um, I think the difference is it's a real person telling a real story rather than just the police saying what may have happened. While on the island, the team have held training sessions with new police and the health department. Some of my training has been helpful with the local police here. We've had um, two training days where uh, I've um, taught a bit of mathematics and a bit of crash analysis. They've been um, extremely receptive to that, and um, yeah, I think they'll do a good job. Everyone has... Um, can have a say in this. Everyone can get involved. Um, in the past it has just been the police or one agency. Now everyone's getting together. Um, we have members of the public that come and talk uh, to the school kids, the people that were first on the scene after the crash. Um, I think everyone should get involved if they feel passionate about it um, and that joint approach has a lot more effect I believe. So if there's one thing that you would like people to get from this whole campaign, what would it be? Uh, think about the outcome of the actions, um, think about the consequences, everyone's got choices, so think about it when you start drinking, how are you going to get home, think about when you get in the car, should you be driving, um, think about the car you're getting into as a passenger, as a driver drunk, what is it going to be the outcome, uh, you could end up dead, you could end up with massive injuries that you have to live with the rest of your life just for one decision, a bad decision. Just another Saturday night will be screened on TV Niwe this coming Sunday. Training excellence to gain standard skills and qualifications for a wide range of vocational careers throughout the Pacific is the focus of the Australian Pacific Technical College or APTC. APTC has centres in Samoa, Fiji, Vanuatu and Papua New Guinea and offers training in tourism, 
hospitality, automotive, manufacturing, construction, electrical, trades, health and community services. Francis Howe is on the island to discuss and possibly sign up those in the private sector and public sector interested in building their capacity whilst gaining an internationally recognised qualification. We don't target school leavers, we target people who are working in industry. Um, the industries that we are targeting are in all of the trades, um, in tourism and hospitality and also in community services and health. So we are looking for people who are interested in achieving an international qualification. The qualifications that we deliver are the Australian Standard Qualifications. And because it's funded by AusAid, we have scholarships available to students who are interested in applying. And so I'm here to talk to possible applicants, um, to employers and to the public service as well. So we're looking for applicants from both the public sector and the private sector to apply to our courses and to come to one of our locations. We have campuses in Fiji, Samoa, Vanuatu and PNG, but we have students from all of the Pacific Island Forum countries. The AusAid funded college was welcomed into the region in 2007 and Niue as well as other Forum Island countries are reaping the benefits. APTC was initially funded by AusAid, by the Australian Government for four years and that was 2007 to 2011. We've been funded again by AusAid with the agreement of the Pacific Island Forum countries for another four years to 2015 and possibly another four after that. So there's big opportunities there for particularly small island countries such as Niue to make the most of that opportunity. Um, we will be offering, uh, continuing to offer courses that meet the demand of those countries. AusAid has said to us, be demand driven. What do the countries need in the way of training? And then we res are responding to that. So there will be you know, continually changing um, to the courses that we have available. But uh, the core is that vocational sector that really supplies the real uh, on the ground services in, in communities and countries across the Pacific. So what would you say to those or poten those potentially looking at studying at APTC mm. at this particular moment? Yes. I'd say come and talk to us. Uh, come and talk to me while I'm here. I'm here to, until Friday and I'm the um, campus manager for Samoa but I can talk to them about any of the courses or come and talk to the training and development unit staff who are here um, from you know all the time and can continue to provide advice. They will need to complete application forms and they will a scholarship form and they will need to do a basic literacy and numeracy test and a knowledge test in the um, industry area that they're interested in. But just come and talk to us. We'll give them all the advice and all the help that we can so that they can apply for a scholarship. If they are successful in getting a scholarship, then they will be provided with all of the training, all their training costs, their travel, their accommodation. While they are studying, they'll also be provided with a small stipend so they can live and uniforms, books and all the tuition is part of that scholarship. So it's a very, very generous scholarship from the Australian Government, but it's because the Australian Government recognises that these skills are so crucial to your countries in the Pacific. Niue's first graduates were acknowledged yesterday with nine public servants, Niue and APTC students, receiving their certificates at a short graduation ceremony to held at the Falefono. A young Niuean man has been sentenced to 13 years imprisonment over an incident in Sydney's eastern suburbs three years ago. The incident that saw the main offender sentenced last year to 19 years imprisonment has left the family shocked and sad. The young man will be eligible for release in 2018. A stalemate between government's Treasury Department and the island's can collectors are causing a bit of concern for premises that has accumulated aluminium cans and no place to clear them to. According to one bar owner, there needs to be a better system to operate the cans, but at present, the cans are rapidly piling on their premises because of the issues between Treasury and the collectors. Director for Environment, Mr. Sauni Tantule, said his department had discussions with Treasury and the collectors to ensure records are kept for funds received, and this is a criteria that is sticking point at present. A representative from the CAN collector said they have adhered to the requirements and once 
the funds paid over so they can continue their job. Each aluminium can pays 5 cents to the consumer. Tuvalu government declared a national emergency last week due to an ongoing drought conditions. Critically low community supplies and desalination units are in need of repair. The decision follows a detailed joint assessment of Nukulai Lai Islands on the 24th to 25th September and an assessment of Funafuti water supply which indicate a serious water so shortages given the capacity of desalination units that remain operable. This is the third consecutive year of below normal rainfall conditions in Tuvalu. The water shortage in Tuvalu has caused a lot of concerns for the islands and some families living in Niue said they are worried about their families back home and hope the international community will be able to assist. Tuvalu does not only have water problems, it also one of the low-lying islands in the Pacific that is in danger of rising sea levels. But the problem is also accelerated by the fact some of the islands lack underground water. Tuvalu is also reported to have very limited rain catchment reserves and household systems that has also added to the island's dilemma. The recent Pacific Island Forum meeting in Auckland heard much of the need from these countries to prioritize assistance due to climate change. Niue, who receives adequate rainfall, has also been hit in the past during drought seasons. However, the island has underground water to rely on, though water resource management has also been vigilant on the use of water. The likelihood of drought-like conditions in Tuvalu is set to continue into December. To end our news bulletin for tonight, this morning at Niue Primary School, government officials and parents were treated to a musical recital which raised $1,000. Principal of Niue Primary, Mrs. Itsi Tukwitonga, said she is proud of the performance today and it's to showcase the students' abilities and what they have learned in the last two terms. She said year four to year six students were happy to display their talents and this is the first of a concert recital for this year. However, she said she is hoping to facilitate one next year. The after school classes by volunteer teachers to help the students was a clear winner. The $1,000 raised today will help to purchase more musical instruments. That's our news bulletin for tonight. Good evening.